You've been eating one meal a day for three months, and at first, the weight fell off like magic. Now your friend is doing the exact same thing and complaining that they feel cold, tired, and stuck at the same weight for weeks. Ever wonder why two people doing identical fasting schedules can have completely opposite results? Today I'll explain what OMAD actually does to your metabolism like you're five years old. By the end, you'll understand why your metabolism adapts rather than simply slowing down why identical fasting schedules produce wildly different results based on how you execute them, and exactly which factors determine whether OMAD becomes your secret weapon or your biggest obstacle. Most people think metabolism is like a campfire. Eat often and the fire stays hot. Skip meals and the fire dies down. But your metabolism isn't a campfire. It's more like a smart thermostat that constantly adjusts based on what's happening in your body right now. Your basal metabolic rate is the energy your body burns just to keep you alive. Breathing, pumping blood, maintaining body temperature, repairing cells. That's roughly 60 to 70% of all the calories you burn each day. The rest comes from movement, digestion, and something called NEAT. NEAT is all the fidgeting and standing and little movements you do without thinking. Your metabolism doesn't have an on-off switch. It has a million tiny dials controlled by hormones. Those hormones respond to what you eat, when you eat, how much you move, and how stressed you are. Here's where it gets interesting. When you start fasting, your body doesn't immediately panic and shut down. For the first 12 to 72 hours, something wild happens. Your metabolism can actually go up. Not by a ton, but studies show a measurable increase of around 3 to 14 percent. Why? Because your body releases adrenaline and norepinephrine to keep you alert and energized while you hunt for food. From an evolutionary standpoint, this makes perfect sense. If you haven't eaten in a day, your body wants you sharp and active. It needs you to go find something to eat, not curl up and conserve energy. It also releases growth hormone to protect your muscle mass while you're running on stored fat. Growth hormone can increase by up to 1300% during extended fasts. That's not a typo. Your body literally turns on muscle-protecting mechanisms when food becomes scarce temporarily. This is why people on short-term fasting often report feeling more focused and energetic, not sluggish. Your insulin drops. Your body switches from burning sugar to burning fat. For many people, this feels incredible. They lose weight quickly, their energy stabilizes, their hunger actually decreases after the first week. This is the OMAD honeymoon phase. But here's what you need to understand. That metabolic boost only lasts as long as your body believes this is temporary. If you keep eating enough calories in that one meal to support your energy needs, you're signaling safety. If you're getting enough protein and lifting weights to maintain muscle, your metabolism can stay strong indefinitely. But if you start under-eating consistently, or if you lose significant muscle mass, everything changes. If your stress hormones stay elevated for too long, your body stops treating fasting like a short hunt. It starts treating it like a famine and that's when the dials start turning down. Now check this out. Your body is incredibly efficient at adapting to perceived threats. If you consistently eat way below what your body needs, it will slow down non-essential functions to conserve energy. Your body temperature drops slightly, sometimes by half a degree. You move less without realizing it, burning 200 to 300 fewer calories through daily activity. Your thyroid hormones decrease. Your reproductive hormones take a hit. You feel colder more tired, less motivated to move. This isn't your metabolism breaking. It's your metabolism doing exactly what it's designed to do, which is keep you alive when food is scarce. The problem is, you're not actually in a famine. You're just eating like you are. This is why two people on OMAD can have totally opposite experiences. Person A eats one big, satisfying meal with 1,800 calories, plenty of protein, lifts weights three times a week, and sleeps well. Their metabolism hums along. They lose fat steadily. They feel great. Person B eats one meal with 1,200 calories, mostly cocoa, skips strength training, and stresses about work. They drink three cups of coffee to stay alert. Their body interprets this as chronic stress and underfueling. Their metabolism adapts downward. They plateau fast. They feel like garbage. Same fasting window, completely different outcomes. The window itself isn't the problem. How you fill it determines everything. Here's the part most people miss. When someone says their metabolism crashed on OMAD, they're usually describing one of five specific things. First, they lost muscle mass because they didn't eat enough protein or do resistance training. Muscle burns more calories at rest than fat, 
so losing muscle directly lowers your metabolic rate. For every pound of muscle lost, you burn roughly six fewer calories per day. That adds up fast. Second, they're eating way fewer calories than they think, or they were already in a deficit for months before starting OMAD, and now their body has fully adapted. Third, they're not actually eating one meal a day. They're snacking on nuts, sipping on bone broth, adding cream to coffee, drinking protein shakes. Those all break the fast and mess with the hormonal benefits. Fourth, their stress is through the roof. High cortisol from lack of sleep, overtraining, or life stress can stall fat loss completely. It also makes you feel terrible, even if the scale isn't moving. Fifth, they hit a plateau because they lost weight. A smaller body naturally needs fewer calories now, but they kept eating the same amount and wonder why progress stopped. So here's what actually matters. OMAD doesn't destroy your metabolism, but OMAD done badly absolutely can. If you're doing OMAD and feeling great, losing fat, maintaining strength, and sleeping well, you're probably doing it right. If you're not obsessing over food, even better. If you're freezing, exhausted, losing strength, and stuck at the same weight for months, something needs to change. The fix isn't to eat six small meals. It's to eat enough in that one meal. Prioritize protein, at least 0.7 grams per pound of body weight. That's 140 grams for a 200-pound person. Lift heavy things regularly to signal your body to keep muscle. Don't stay in a severe calorie deficit for months on end. Cycle your fasting windows occasionally. Some people do better with a five-hour eating window instead of one hour. Some people benefit from taking a diet break every few months where they eat at maintenance. Your body is smart, but it's also adaptable, and adaptation cuts both ways. Here's the reality. Your metabolism slows slightly when you lose weight, no matter how you do it. That's normal. A smaller body needs fewer calories to function, but if your metabolic rate drops way more than expected for your new weight, that's a red flag. That's adaptive thermogenesis, and it happens when your body thinks it's starving. The solution isn't to avoid fasting. It's to avoid chronic undereating, maintain muscle, manage stress, and treat your body like it's worth fueling properly. The truth is, OMAD is a tool. It works brilliantly for some people and terribly for others. It doesn't magically boost or destroy metabolism on its own. What it does is create a structure that can make fat loss easier. It reduces eating windows and controls insulin. But if you use that structure to chronically undereat, you'll struggle. If you skip protein, ignore strength training, and stress yourself into the ground, you'll feel awful. The fasting window isn't magic. The quality of what you do inside and outside that window determines everything. Whether your metabolism stays strong or adapts downward depends entirely on your execution. So to recap, short-term fasting can increase metabolic rate through adrenaline and growth hormone. Long-term undereating or muscle loss will decrease. Two people on OMAD can have opposite results depending on calories, protein, training, and stress. Most metabolism crashes are actually muscle loss, chronic low protein, hidden calories, or severe deficits sustained too long. You prevent this by eating enough, prioritizing protein, lifting weights, and cycling your approach. Stop treating your body like the enemy. So here's the real question. If you're doing OMAD right now, are you actually fueling your one meal properly? Or are you accidentally starving yourself in the name of optimization while wondering why everyone else seems to thrive? Drop your honest experience in the comments because I guarantee someone needs to hear it.